Welcome to Item Breakdown, a series where I analyze every single item in Mario Maker 2, go over their properties, and find interesting ways to use them in our own levels. This video is all about the Spike Ball. A Spike Ball is an enemy asset available in every game style. While it is technically just a variant of the Spike enemy asset, the amount of unique properties and interactions a Spike Ball presents warrants its own video. In fact, this is quite possibly the most information-heavy item breakdown to date. So if your eyes start to glaze over while I talk about all this stuff, I don't blame you. While I have your full attention, please consider subscribing to the channel. I put a ton of effort into the research, writing, and editing of these videos, and would really appreciate it. Anyway, let's get on with this ridiculously complicated course part. A spike ball is 1x1 one one tiles in size, affected by gravity, and will damage Mario upon contact. Mario is able to jump on top of a spike ball without destroying it by either spin jumping on it, jumping on it while riding Yoshi, or bouncing off of it using Link's down thrust attack. Mario will destroy a spike ball when jumping on it inside of a Goomba shoe, dry bones shell, or Koopa Troopa car. When a spike ball is loaded, there are a few conditions that influence in which direction it will roll. A spike ball will always roll to the left if it spawns as the level first loads. A spike ball will roll in Mario's direction if it is scrolled on screen, if Mario enters the area through a door, pipe, or warp box, if it is spawned by a vertical facing pipe, and if it is thrown by a spike or Lakitu. A spike ball will begin rolling in the opposite direction if it collides with a sideways spring, or if it doesn't have enough momentum to travel up a sloped surface. Speaking of, the direction a spike ball rolls, as well as its speed, is directly affected by sloped surfaces, those being steep and gentle slopes, tilted seesaws, and sloped conveyor belts. A spike ball will steadily accelerate or decelerate as it rolls down or up a sloped surface, respectively. A spike ball that is turned around by any means other than a sloped surface will have its speed reset to its default value of 4.5 tiles a second. A spike ball is not destroyed if it collides with solid objects from below, unless it is completely crushed. However, it is destroyed if it collides with any solid object from the side. It is also destroyed if it is hit by another spike ball, a boss-like enemy, a hammer attack from Builder Mario, a cannonball attack from Cannonbox Mario, Mario wearing a spiny shelmet, or if it is in range of any kind of POW block explosion. A spike ball will defeat the following enemies you see here upon contact, and remain intact. If a spike ball collides with the following enemies, it will deal damage to them, but be destroyed in the process. It will also pass through the enemies you see here, and one that collides with these enemies will be destroyed. One that collides with either a bully or giant ant trooper is simply bounced away. A spike ball will destroy block blocks and crates when coming into contact with them from either the side or below and is not destroyed itself when colliding with crates from the side. A spike ball will activate the following blocks from either the side or below. Block blocks, question mark blocks, note blocks, pow blocks, on off blocks, and exclamation mark blocks by one segment. Additionally, it will also activate a hidden block from below, a note block from above, and a p-switch from above or below depending on the orientation of the p-switch. In the Super Mario Bros. and Super Mario Bros. 3 game styles, a spike ball thrown by a spike is not initially affected by gravity, traveling horizontally across the screen. It will become gravity affected if it is grabbed by a swinging claw, knocked by Mario wearing a Buzzy Beetle Shelmet, hit by a tail swipe from Raccoon Mario, comes into contact with Link's shield, or if it comes into contact with a solid surface. In the Super Mario World, New Super Mario Bros. U, and Super Mario 3D World game styles, a spike ball thrown by a spike is affected by gravity, traveling in a small arc above the spike when thrown, and rolling in the direction spike through it. The only difference here being that in the Super Mario World game style, a spike will throw spike balls at a slightly faster rate. 
Aside from spike throwing differences, a spike ball placed in the editor functions the same across all the different game styles. A spike ball has two modifications and one variant, not including spike. Its modifications are giant and parachuting. A giant spike ball is 2x2 two two tiles in size. It shares most properties of a spike ball, except for the following. A giant spike ball destroys blocks without being destroyed itself, and is now able to destroy blocks from above. In addition to the blocks a regular spike ball is able to destroy, a giant spike ball will destroy hard blocks, activated hidden blocks, ice blocks, and frozen coins. It is also able to destroy cloud blocks, but only from above. A giant spike ball is no longer able to activate hidden blocks, as well as question mark blocks or block blocks on account that it now destroys them. Every other activatable block remains the same, besides exclamation blocks. A giant spike ball will now activate an exclamation block to their maximum amount, and will even activate one from above. A parachuting spike ball descends slowly toward the bottom of the screen, rolling either left or right depending on the conditions of how it was spawned. A parachuting spike ball in the Super Mario 3D World game style is the only object in the game so far to have a unique parachuting pattern, swaying to the left and right as it descends. Who knows why this is a thing, or how it could be used, but it's worth pointing out. A spike ball in the snow theme becomes a snowball. It shares most properties of a spike ball, except for the following. A snowball begins as stationary, unless thrown by a spike, thrown by a Lakitu, launched from a Bill Blaster, or spawned from a horizontally facing pipe. Mario is able to grab and throw a snowball that isn't rolling. Mario is also able to kick a stationary snowball by walking into it. A snowball can also start rolling by coming into contact with a sideways spring, Mario wearing a Buzzy Beetle shelmet, or a sloped surface. Interestingly enough, there seems to be a certain threshold of momentum a snowball must gather before it starts rolling indefinitely. This can be seen by placing one just on the edge of a sloped surface, as it will begin to roll but won't gather enough speed to continue rolling. If Mario jumps on a snowball that's rolling, he will bounce off of it and the snowball will stop rolling. Mario is also able to spin jump on a snowball whether it's rolling or not, however doing so destroys the snowball. If a rolling snowball collides with Mario while he is standing still, or if they are moving in the opposite direction, he does not take damage, but is knocked back a bit instead. If Mario collides with a rolling snowball while they are moving in the same direction, he kicks it forward and it will begin to roll faster. A rolling snowball activates the same objects a spike ball does, except for P-switches. However, when hitting an object from the side, it will be destroyed. Just like a spike ball, it is still not destroyed when hitting blocks from below. A snowball that is thrown or knocked up activates the same objects a spike ball does, however now it is destroyed when coming into contact with any solid objects. A snowball also defeats and damages the same enemies a spike ball does, however contact with any enemy destroys the snowball immediately. Additionally, a snowball is also destroyed when hit by Link's sword, Link's arrows, a fireball from Fire Mario, and a Super Ball from Super Ball Mario. A Pokey that is defeated in the snow theme will drop a snowball. It behaves identically to the spike variant of the same name. A giant snowball cannot be picked up normally, but is able to activate P-switches from above or below, and while a giant spike ball is unable to activate hidden blocks, a giant snowball can. SMB2 Mario is able to stand on top of a snowball instead of bouncing off of it, whether it's rolling or not, and is able to pick one up from above, including a giant snowball. He is also able to summon a snowball from ground blocks or semi-solids by crouching and then pressing the run button. A spike ball can be placed inside of a block, pipe, and bill blaster. A spike ball that is released from a block will always roll to the right. A spike ball spawned from a horizontally facing pipe will roll in the direction the pipe is facing. One spawned from a vertically facing pipe will roll in the direction Mario was in when the pipe began spawning it. A pipe will only spawn one spike ball at a time, spawning another once the first is no longer loaded. A spike ball launched by a bill blaster will roll in the direction it was launched in, 
Just like with pipes, a bill blaster will only launch one until the first is no longer loaded. A spike ball can be given to a Lakitu and will roll in whichever direction the Lakitu throws it. A Lakitu will only throw one spike ball at a time. Only throwing... yeah, you get the idea. A spike ball can be placed inside and occupy a Koopa Clown car and Lakitu's cloud. In a Lakitu's cloud, it will pilot the vehicle on a horizontal plane, and in a Koopa Clown car, it will pilot the vehicle towards Mario. A snowball in a Koopa Clown car can be jumped off of and destroyed. However, if Mario is holding the run button, he will pick it up instead. A spike ball is able to be placed in, as well as grabbed by, a swinging claw. When released, it will begin rolling in the direction it was originally rolling when grabbed. A spike ball can be placed on a track. While on a track, it is not considered rolling. However, if it is knocked off of the track, it will begin rolling as normal. A spike ball is able to enter a horizontally facing clear pipe. When exiting one, it will roll in the direction the clear pipe is facing. However, when exiting a vertically facing clear pipe, the direction it rolls depends on which direction it was traveling through the most recent section of horizontal clear pipe. Yoshi is able to grab a spike ball with its tongue. When spit from Yoshi's mouth while crouching, it will travel at its default speed. However, when spat out normally, it will travel at a much faster pace. A spike ball hit by Mario wearing a Buzzy Beetle Shelmet will be knocked in the air. It is possible to change the direction it rolls by hitting it from the opposite side. A spike ball hit by Mario wearing a Spiny Shelmet will be destroyed. A spike ball hit by a Tail Swipe, Cape Twirl, Cat Scratch, or Boomerang will be knocked upwards a bit and begin rolling in the opposite direction it was hit from. A snowball hit by the same methods will be knocked upwards much higher and will stop rolling if it was rolling when hit. A spike ball will bounce off of Link's shield and begin rolling in the opposite direction it was hit from. A spike ball that Mario directly interacted with via the aforementioned methods is able to collect all types of coins as well as keys. This is also true with a snowball. A spike ball will be lifted up by a twister but continue rolling in the direction it was rolling in. That is, unless it spawns directly above a twister, in which case it will hover in place. It doesn't travel with the twister though, simply falling down once the twister moves. While a conveyor belt can make a spike ball move faster or slower, it doesn't inherently influence its rolling speed. That is, except for sloped conveyors that happen to keep a spike ball on a sloped surface for longer or shorter periods of time, causing for some unique rolling speeds not possible otherwise. A spike ball will bounce off of a spring, note block, mushroom trampoline, and hop chop. The sound it makes when bouncing off of a music block is a castanet. The sound a snowball makes is a tabla. A spike ball travels slower through liquids and is not destroyed by either lava or poison. And a snowball, well, a snowball can never interact with any form of liquid, as a spike ball and its variants cannot be taken through warp pipes. They can still be taken through doors and warp boxes, however. A spike ball does not have a clear condition, though the spike enemy does. In the night, airship, and sky themes, a spike ball is affected by low gravity. In the night, ghost house, and underwater themes, a spike ball will cast a faint light around its center in all game styles except for SMB. In the night ground theme, a spike ball will attempt to roll towards Mario's current position, changing directions and traveling up sloped surfaces on its own. When thrown by a spike in the SMB1 or SMB3 game styles, while it is unaffected by gravity, it will travel through the air and home in on Mario. Once one becomes gravity affected, it will still pursue Mario. So, now that we know how it works, how do we work with it? <sighs> the spike ball is certainly a beast of a course part, now isn't it? It's not often that a variant of one item completely overshadows its main counterpart. But beyond that, I'd say it's one of the most useful items in the game, even though it was only rolled out in patch 2.0. That's because it fills a niche not yet provided by any other course part. It's a gravity-affected, law-of-motion-abiding, rootin' tootin', roly-poly round boy that can be used to kill plumbers, help plumbers, activate blocks, destroy blocks, or all of the above, 
all at once. It's safe to say that this course part definitely belongs in a museum. But let's get the ball rolling with some traditional level use cases, as they are arguably the simplest. The spike ball makes for an excellent obstacle, as there are countless ways to assemble this polemical ball. Create an ominous cavern filled with rolling spike balls, spike balls falling from ceilings, and spike balls bouncing between gaps. Have Mario travel through an ice-covered desert, where new paths open up depending on how these spike balls roll. Give the illusion of a busy cityscape, where spike balls roll their way down the road whenever the traffic lights turn red. Even when underwater, these sunken ball busters pose an obvious threat, and with their movement slowed, can even throw an experienced boulder averter off kilter. Instead of having them as purely hostile, they could also function as modes of travel. Having them roll over large pits of dangerous land can give Mario the means to traverse across them. Giving them parachutes allows them to slowly float down ravines, giving Mario plenty of time to line up his jumps accordingly. Speaking of using them as means to an end, I highly recommend the spike ball in puzzle levels. The countless interactions it houses espouses boundless ways to dumbfound thousands. Where there are plenty of routes to go down when creating a spike ball based puzzle, my favorite utilize either everyone's favorite dinosaur or everyone's favorite Hylian. With Yoshi, picking up and puking out spike balls is extremely satisfying. Throw in other items, such as sideways springs or swinging claws, and now we've got a mass of different puzzle solution combos to ponder. With Link, he can redirect spike balls with his shield, sending them towards switches or destructible blocks. They could also be used as moving targets for Link to bounce off of in order to progress through the stage. Of course, these are just my favorite, but there are tons of other unique ways to realize this round rolling rock. A particularly interesting concept I've seen is guiding them through obstacle courses in the night ground theme, or guiding a snowball through an obstacle course in the snow theme. This concept becomes particularly impactful when paired with our turnip-picking protagonist, SMB2 Mario. Because he's able to pluck up snowballs on a whim, we could theoretically design a snowball-centric course without ever actually placing a single snowball in our stage. Just remember, anything you can do to reduce the amount of downtime in your level will vastly improve how it feels to play. Waiting for long periods of time in order to make progress makes for a slow and painful experience. The spike ball lays a rock-solid foundation for Kaizo, speedrun, and platforming levels alike. Spin jumping on a spike ball while avoiding other hazards throughout the level, horizontally or vertically, is a boulder of a time. I, I don't know. This can also be used in conjunction with the Master Sword power-up, forcing Link to bounce off of a spike ball in between sections where they're separated. A few different tiered slopes influence the speed of the spike ball, either giving Link plenty of time to tackle the task at hand, or create a sense of urgency in order to catch up to his spiky ride. Or, instead of using the spike ball as a companion, use it as a constant source of pressure, destroying the very platforms the player is standing on at the very last second. And with SMB2 Mario's newfound ability to hitch a ride on these round hunks of compacted ice crystals, there's no shortage of snowbound fun to be found. Last but certainly not least, contraptions. Mario Maker 2 is already a game chock full of enough moving parts to create complex machinery. So, when a relatively new item can immediately become a staple in a contraption builder's repertoire, you know you've struck gold or, you know, whatever metal this spiky ball is made of. While it might not seem like much, the fact that it immediately starts moving when spawned is a very big deal. What used to require both a shell and a spring to set up can now be accomplished by a single spike ball. Throw in the fact that there were no placeable empty shells in 3D World, and it's on a roll. Finally, to top it all off, it can even activate hidden blocks, something a course part was never able to do by itself before. This depth of functionality gives it so many different uses that I couldn't possibly go over all of them here. I'd just like to bounce a couple off you though. It can instantly activate a block when placed right next to it. Simple, fast, and efficient, leaving no extra entities or annoying sounds once the job is done. In the same vein, instead of having it activate instantly, 
It could be used to time certain events, as you can determine how long it takes to reach its destination once spawned. It's also able to carry a signal upward. By making a chain of spike balls within blocks, each time one is released, it will activate the block above it, and so on. This could be combined with hidden blocks as well for a fun surprise. Honestly, whether you're creating complex machinery or terror-inducing trolls, this rotating globe rolls over the competition. And that's just an axis of this gyrating sphere. If you're looking for more inspiration, check out another one of these item breakdowns. A huge thank you to my patrons and YouTube members for making this series possible, and I'll see you in the next one.